for two high school friends who started out with a guitar, an accordion and some pre-recorded drum tracks. John Flansberg and John Linnell of They Might Be Giants have had a very good run indeed. In the past 35 years, they've released 20 albums and contributed songs to films, TV and most recently Broadway. But one thing they've never managed is a US hit single. And that, says John Linnell, has turned out to be an advantage. We are not annoying the hell out of anybody, you know. We're not, it's not, there's not some thing in our repertoire that people are groaning about. I think that the people who recognize us and remember us have, do so generally with a kind of pleasant feeling. More than just a pleasant feeling, but a level of devotion that keeps them singing along three decades later. Generations of die-hard fans have been taken with the Giants' infectious melodies and reliably clever, occasionally absurd lyrics. But while this music sounds like fun, the group's founders are deadly serious. We are very uptight in, in a way about what we're doing. Most people who work with us quickly come to understand that we are control freaks. And <laughs> I am very specifically like, you know, you know, this huge gatekeeper. I am more than happy to be the, the bad cop if a bad cop is, is needed. If the duo is particular, it's because they've been captains of their own fairly offbeat creative ship for a long time. Even now, John and John retain the gritty do-it-yourself attitude that brought them success early on. In 1983, they started Dial a Song, which offered new They Might Be Giant songs as the outgoing message on the answering machine at John Flanberg's Brooklyn apartment. Their early music videos, mostly homemade on a shoestring budget, earned them national exposure on MTV. But their real breakthrough came in 1990 with the band's third album, Flood which has sold more than a million copies worldwide to date. Thanks in part to Birdhouse in Your Soul, quirky tales of ancient history as told by a blue canary nightlight. It reached number six on the UK pop charts. And though the group's light-hearted approach resonated with British audiences, some in the media were less amused. Admit it, this funny thing can't last. <laughs> what were you thinking when you thought you could succeed with uh, this humorous music? Doesn't it seem like a mistake that you're doing music with a sense of humor? Like, the, each, each, it's, it's just the, same the, re the reiteration of the same question over <laughs> and over again. And we're, and we're just like, yeah, lady, it's cool. <laughs> Don't you ever get fed up with the sort of gimmicks? And do you, do you ever think that they might wear thin the humour? Are you into sort of gimmicks and everything? It's completely a gimmick. We don't have a problem like saying very glib things about our work, but we really have a difficult time hearing other people say it. But this sense of humour that so offended that reporter has made They Might Be Giants a big hit with young children, for whom they've made several albums. We didn't want it to be some kind of remedial you know, good for you type of thing. I mean, I don't think we're uniquely qualified for many things, but I think what happened with uh, the kids stuff is we, we actually had like a transferable skill. My house is full of sevens. They're filling up the living room. Of their four children's albums, three have gone gold. One even earned a Grammy. But the duo still writes mainly music for grown-ups. Despite its title, their 2018 album, I Like Fun, explores more weighty topics. I Left My Body is what it suggests. Mm -hmm. It's a visit to the pearly gates. Possibly, that's one, yeah. I mean, I, I think we, you know, we don't, we're not nailing everything completely down, but there's a strong element of death throughout the album, but there's, but there's also fun, uh, you know. The fun of death. <laughs> there's also some fairly unveiled references to opioid addiction, if I'm not mistaken. I like fun, it's about, it's about prescription drugs. Uh, 
which I guess there are some, there's some, it's in a sense a cautionary tale. It's sort of, I think, you know, one of the things that people, when people talk about drugs, it's so strange to me, is the reason people get into drugs is that it's fun. So it's like, you know, that, that part they skip over really gingerly, and the song is kind of about that confusion, you know, that confusion. So how can something, you know, some, as simple as the idea of fun get so, like, messed up by this, by this, you know, addiction stuff. Impatiently I wait to refill my prescription and count the time of the drugstore clock. With each new project, Flansburg and Linnell strive to impress their most difficult critics, each other. I put something together and I think, what will John think? And even without him there, I'm already, I can see it possibly curdling, you know. Uh, oh, you're, so you're almost self-editing before it gets to the Yeah, other absolutely. That's, oh, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think the idea of the other person being like the first audience is very, I mean, in a, in a way that, that's probably what defines us as a group more than anything else. That's a part of, sort of invisible part of the collaboration is that, you know, you just want to kind of impress, impress the other person. For your chance to win autographed They Might Be Giants swag, including an actual Blue Canary Nightlight autographed by the band, visit our website. Articulate with Jim Cotter is made possible with generous funding from the Neubauer Family Foundation.